بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته guys welcome back to our YouTube channel Islam Daily and you've all tuned in to our Nasiha series episode number 11 honestly guys I pray each and every single one of you is doing well especially during this pandemic my du'as are with each and every single one of you and I also request each and every single one of you to make sincere dua for me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects me, my family and also uses this uh, channel a means of my salvation and your salvation on the day of Qiyamah. Anyway guys, moving on inshallah, in today's episode I want to be mentioning something very important and alhamdulillah I believe it coincides really well with what we are currently going through uh, in terms of the coronavirus pandemic and that is visiting the sick now guys there is so much importance with regards to visiting the sick that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned so many benefits and we find so many ahadith with regards to the virtue of visiting somebody who is sick uh, along with this there is a hadith in which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has clearly mentioned that it is a right of a believer over a another believer that he comes and visits him when he when he is sick and i'm just paraphrasing this hadith and and some scholars have gone to such a degree that is and they say that it is wajib it is wajib for a person to go and visit the sick but the most preferred opinion is that it is actually sunnah that when you hear that somebody is, somebody is sick it is sunnah for you to go out and visit that person and find out how he or she is the first point guys that i want to mention is with regards to the virtues um, that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned in the hadith so guys the first hadith is in sahih muslim where rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says man aada maridan lam yazil fi khurfat al jannati hatta yarji'a aw kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says he who visits the sick continues to remain in the fruit garden of paradise until he returns hatta yarji'a until he returns i.e as long as you are staying with the sick and you are in the company of the sick person you are there with that person you will remain in the fruit gardens of paradise until you return from the first point we can see how much benefit rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has mentioned with regards to visiting the sick point number two is how do you visit the sick so when we look into the books of hadith is made mention that you should place your hand upon the ill person's head and then you should physically ask them how they are doing now the ulama and the commentators of this hadith they say that if it is going to cause the ill and sick person some sort of pain or distress by you placing your hand on their on their head or you physically asking them how they are you should refrain from this so if you know by me placing my hand on their head it may cause me harm it, co it could cause them harm then you should refrain from them then just physically ask them how they are doing Along with this, if you know by me asking them how they are doing may upset them, may worry them, may put them into distress, then you should physically refrain from asking them. And you know the family members who are around there, you can ask them, the scholars and the ulama say, you can ask the family members who are taking care of the ill person, you can ask them how the ill person is doing, how their health is, what the doctor is saying, um, what uh, medication are they taking, um, is, are things looking positive, are things looking negative. So point number two is, what is the way and how we should visit the sick? I've mentioned what it says in hadith and I've also mentioned to you guys what the scholars say, what we should do and how we should refrain from certain things if we know that will cause them distress, pain and worry inshallah. Now guys, point number three is, when we visit the sick, is there any du'as to recite? Do we need to physically say anything? Or do we just sit there and ask them how they are and that, it is, that, and that is it? The answer is no. Each and every single stage and moment of our life, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah has taught us a dua, he has taught us a method, he has taught us something that we can then implement. So at this time, when you are visiting a sick person, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us multiple duas, but I'm going to just mention two duas to you. Dua number one is la ba'sa 
طهور إن شاء الله لا بأس طهور إن شاء الله which means there is no worry لا بأس there is no worry do not worry whatsoever طهور إن شاء الله this will be a means of your purification بإذن الله تعالى you going through this sickness you going through this illness don't worry إن شاء الله this is from الله سبحانه وتعالى لا بأس سبحان الله I think you guys are listening attentively سبحان الله um, a point came into my mind look how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us positivity even though when we look in we look at that individual he may be going through a negative phase look how Rasulullah sallallahu is telling us to boost that person's morale giving that positivity don't worry inshallah la bas don't worry inshallah this time will pass very quickly tahuran inshallah this is a means of your purification don't think negative that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen me and now i fallen ill and this has happened or that has happened no look how rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is teaching positivity a positive mindset something that i was mentioning a few videos ago how we can have a positive mindset so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says when you go to visit the sick give them a dua and mention and say la ba'sa tahuran insha allah do not worry insha allah this will be a means of your purification another dua that rasulullah sallam has taught us as'alullah al-azim rabb al-arsh al-azim an yashfiyaka i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i ask allah the azim rabb al-arsh al-azim the one who is the lord of the great arsh an yashfiyaka that he cures you and in one hadith, it makes mention that you should recite this seven times. So two beautiful du'as that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us that we should say when we visit the sick person. Guys, the last and final point that I want to make, and I will leave it here because I believe the video is getting a little bit long, is when we open the books of hadith, there is actually more focus on us staying away from disturbing, uh, bringing worry, uh, bringing distress and discomfort to the sick there is more focus on this than us actually going out and visiting the sick subhanallah so the key thing that we need to understand looking at both hadith the hadith on the virtue of visiting the sick and the hadith with regards to um, refraining from causing the sick person any distress or harm the scholars and the ulama say that we should really focus on those hadith that make sure any action that I do, anything that I do, it does not cause any harm, discomfort to the sick person. By me visiting that person, yes, I might be acting upon the virtues, but that could cause harm and distress to the ill person. So, we need to be very mindful. We need to be very careful, especially during the time of COVID-19, when we find our family and friends have unfortunately uh, fallen sick due to COVID-19. We should bear in mind that, yes, it is a great virtue, me going out and visiting uh, and, and seeing how my sick person is, but it can also be done over the mobile phone. It can be done by asking their friends and family members who are taking care of them, making dua for them, maybe dropping them a text message of encouragement, that do not worry, inshallah, la ba'sa tuhurun, inshallah, you will get through this. Stay strong, stay positive, use this as a means to bounce back and become stronger in your deen, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. So guys, these were just a few points that I wanted to mention. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use these words for me but not against me on the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure each and every single one of us mentally, physically and spiritually. And those unfortunately that have been hit by COVID-19, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them a speedy recovery. And those fellow brothers and sisters, our mothers and fathers that unfortunately have passed away due to the virus uh, COVID-19, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate their rank in Jannah. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Guys, the last and final point I promise is just a very quick update. Update number one, inshallah, due to your love and support and your beautiful feedback, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, our channel Islam Daily is growing day by day uh, and is going in the direction that our team here Islam Daily wants it to go. The good news and the main announcement is I want you guys to be ready inshallah our website is coming very very soon and I will make a separate video with regards to that uh, what our website is all about what content you can find on there bi'idhnillahi ta'ala so I want to say a huge zakallah khair for you guys for your love and support may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every single one of you guys immensely 
The second point that I want to mention in terms of an announcement, and I will leave it here, I promise guys, is with your support and feedback, Alhamdulillah, Thumma Alhamdulillah, this month, January the 31st at 11 a.m., it is a Sunday, Islam Daily will be conducting its first ever course, and this course is about the fiqh of Salatul Istikhara. With regards to istikhara, we have so many questions. How do you perform istikhara? What is the importance of istikhara? And the most important thing, the misconceptions we all have with regards to salatul istikhara. Do I need to see a dream? Do I need to feel a certain feeling? Do I need to see certain colors in my dream for me to know my istikhara is good or bad? So guys, Inshallah, we will be debunking all the myths of Salatul Istikhara in this one day course. Inshallah, it will be very beneficial. I myself will be conducting the course. Inshallah, in the description below, there will be a link. Follow the link to register bi idnillahi ta'ala. And I will see you guys there um, January the 31st. Share it with your friends and family so they can also benefit. And you guys who enroll onto the course will be taking a pioneering step. That you who enroll onto this course, inshallah, will be the first batch of individuals who helped Islam daily deliver its first course. And inshallah, this course will then evolve for us to inshallah provide many courses in the future. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala al kareem inshallah. Guys, I've gone for so long. Remember me in your sincere du'as. My name is Muhammad Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Guys, if you've benefited by our video today, then why not subscribe to our YouTube channel? And you can do this very easy by hitting the subscribe button right here. And if you've not watched our last video, very simple and easy, you can watch it right here, guys. My name is Muhammad Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.